it's important that you break up with your parents so that you free them and you. It's important that you break up with your parents because life doesn't happen to you, it happens through you. Your job is not to make it happen, your job is to welcome it, to be the vibrational match and space for abundance to burst forward and out and in and in every direction. The conditions of the soil determines the productivity of the seed. Blessings and blessings, beautiful people. My name is Preston Smiles. Oh, oh, and I am coming to you today with one of the most important subjects that we could possibly dive into in this lifetime. And that is the subject and the gift of breaking up with your parents, whether they are dead or alive. Why? It's important plus how to do so. I am extremely grateful to be doing this podcast today, especially because I am recording this podcast on July the 6th, 2022. My father would have been 73 today. He died in 2019. While I was at Burning Man, he left me a message on a Tuesday that said he's the happiest man on the planet to give him a call back, uh, that he's fired up and he's so happy because he had just found out that we were having boy girl twins. And uh, on Friday night, he died. And ironically, um, in a beautiful, interesting twist of fate because of our deep connection with each other and because I had already broken up with him years prior, uh, our connection was so clean and so powerful that I knew something had gone awry. I was at a party deep um, in the desert at Burning Man and at around 10 p.m., I looked at my friends and I said, I think it's time for me to go home. And they were like, what? The night just got started. And I said, no, I think, I, I, think I, I need to go. And so I got on my bike and I drove through the night. And by the time I got to my RV, my phone started dinging. Now, uh, for those of you who've ever been to Burning Man, you know that there's basically no cell service. And yet the universe created a way where as I got closer to my RV, my phone dinged probably a hundred times. And uh, I stopped, got off my bike, and I walked the rest of the way and opened up my phone. And what I saw was my sister. The first text I got was from my sister. And it said, call me, it's about daddy. And I had this um, sinking feeling of like, oh, I know what this is. I've been bracing for this call for the last 10 years. And to make a long story short, um, I got in the trailer and there was actually enough cell service for me to speak to my sister and my mom. And uh, they shared that my dad had just died two hours prior, which is interesting because that's when I started to feel different. And so uh, his, while his soul was passing uh, and going to the next stage of its evolution, he probably passed by me and uh, sort of touched me on the head or whatever you want to call it. And um, this is why I'm really grateful. I've cried twice this morning um, and I may during this podcast, but I want you all to know that what I'm about to share with you about breaking up with your parents is actually one of the best gifts you can ever give uh, the person that was the portal for you to make your way earth side. Um, as a parent myself of four beautiful little nuggets, little, I had poop on my fingers earlier, um, just as a sort of breakdown. Um, at 5 a.m., um, my 
four-year-old son came in, crawled on top of me directly, um, and tried to fall asleep. Uh, at 5.30, my other son and daughter, the twins, uh, started screaming and singing their ABCs and um, some other song. And then our nine-month-old started woke up and I went and grabbed him and Ah, parenting is a beast. And I'm going to do a whole nother piece on that. But what I want you to hear most importantly is as a parent, I still get and understand how important this is. And I hope my children and their children's children watch slash listen to this podcast and do the same thing with me. Uh, because I'm not going <laughs> to, I'm not going to willfully let them go. Uh, there is a deep, powerful connection between uh, child and parent. And sometimes that connection can be toxic. Sometimes it can be very harmful. Some of you were raised in extremely abusive situations. And uh, I want you to know I have deep compassion for you, for you and your parent. Um, Because to hurt another being like that, inevitably I know without a shadow of a doubt that hurt people hurt people. And uh, at some point the cycle has to stop. And a part of what we're going to be sharing today is helping stop that cycle and create a new one, uh, something that uh, can be leaned against, a pillar uh, for generations to come. So uh, let me start with why I think it's important. I I just shared a lot of that, but I, I want to go a little deeper. Your parents, the ones you chose, I'm not saying you chose them consciously. I'm not saying that you, 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 you know, had a conscious thought, let me choose these parents. Um, but you chose them, right? There's, there's my business, your business, and God's business. God's business is what is. And what is, is you came through a portal and you chose out of billions of people, out of billions of humans, you chose to come through those two people. So that you could experience and transmute and go through your journey as you in this lifetime with them as the backdrop. So whatever trauma and shame and guilt and pain and suffering and overwhelm and repression that your parents experience more than likely based on their parents and their shame and their trauma and their guilt and their repression. Whatever that is, you chose into that life. And more than likely, if you're listening to something like this, it's because it stops with you. So we'll just put a mm, mm, hand on heart, left hand on heart, right hand up in the air, eyes closed, and just mm, congratulations for being so attuned to that which is calling you forward. You don't listen to stuff like this. You don't click on stuff like this unless there is a part of you that knows that this is your divine assignment. It wasn't theirs and their parents and their parents and their parents. It was yours. You chose this assignment. So their shame, their pain, their repression, their guilt, all of that stuff, you were born into that, born into their uh, their beliefs, born into their interpretations, born into the city, the town, the church, the school, the family, the aunties, the uncles. You chose all of that so that you may transmute it. The question is, is what's stopping you? What's blocking you? from doing so. If I had to guess, it's you're so enmeshed and immersed in their trauma and it's bled into your trauma that there's there's fear, there's 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 toxic fear, there's toxic shame still living in your somatic body and it's challenging for you to see slash be outside of that. And you're not broken. And there's nothing wrong with you. 
what I just spoke about is um, the the uh, the evidence, the uh, after effect of growing up in your household. That's not who you are. It's mm, who you became as a safety mechanism, as a way to control, as a way to be safe as a way to uh, not feel rejected. And if I had to guess, you found your way here because that's no longer serving you. It served you to the degree that it did when it did, but it's not serving you now, which is why you clicked on this. So it's important that you break up with your parents so that you free them and you. It's important that you break up with your parents because life doesn't happen to you. It happens through you. Your job is not to make it happen. Your job is to welcome it, to be the vibrational match and space for abundance to burst forward and out and in and in every direction. We 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 the, the 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 conditions of the soil determines the productivity of the seed. Oof! I'm gonna say it again for those in the back. The condition of the soil determines the productivity of the seed. You are all at once the seed, which holds the blueprint for the whole tree, and the soil. Everything that you ever needed is already inside of you. An entire oak tree, an entire avocado tree, an entire apple tree is living inside the seed. There are books and hugs and transformational moments and laughter and companies and ideas that already live inside of you and they cannot slash will not come forward until you create the conditions for them to come forward so it is your job to create the conditions now how do we create the conditions we break up with our parents we get out of the idea of who we should be based on what mommy and daddy believed was a good girl or boy or gender non-binary. You were raised in an idea, raised in an interpretation. They thought and had expectations of you particularly. And if your dad or mom was the screw up, more than likely you overcompensated. You went the other way. There was no space for you to do anything other than be perfect. So you became a perfectionist. Or, or, you disengaged from all of it. You became um, (laughs) unattached as a way to free yourself, as a way to hmm, not be taken by the virus of the mind, by the energy of shame and pain. But that's no longer necessary in this lifetime for you anymore. So we break up with our parents and create space, room for spirit, Buddha, Krishna, Allah, Jesus, source, divine intelligence. We move out of the way and allow that thing to speak to, through, and as us. We move out of the way and allow ourselves to be used by the higher self for something bigger than we can currently cognize and understand. Some of you took jobs, wear clothes, wear your hair in particular ways because you're being loyal to the idea that you were born into. Mm. Some of you have parents that are overbearing. That st- when are you going to give me grandkids? Why did you take that job? Why don't you do this? Why don't you go to this school? Why don't you do this and get these kind of grades? They are so enmeshed and so involved in your life that there is you don't have a life. 
You are participating mm, as a, uh, <laughs> a, a version of what they didn't get to do in theirs. So here this loud and clear, us cutting the cord and breaking up with our parents is about freeing you and freeing them. You didn't come here to live their lives. Some of your parents overstep their boundaries often. Overstep your boundaries often. And so you avoid. You only go home during the holidays. You stay away from mommy and daddy and sister and brother and all the family scripts that all of you were born into. Oh, my sister's a smart one. I'm the fucked up one. My dad's this. My mom's this. And we all repress and pretend like none of it's happening. Mm. Tough pill to swallow. So you barely go home on the holidays, but they still own you. They still own you because you're in denial. You're in resistance. And what you resist, persist on every level. You aren't free just because you don't go home. Spirits begging you to come forward. No, uh, let me say that differently. Spirit is inviting you to come forward, to come out of the closet, to free yourself and experience the explosion of life that comes forward when you are free from the idea of who you need or think you need to be. Mm. Mm. You didn't come here to live their life. I'm going to tell you a little story about how I broke up with my parents. Number one, you got to make the decision that that's going to happen. It may be a process, but it's going to happen. It's happening. So I made the decision. Uh, I see what's happening here. I'm playing out scripts. I'm not allowing myself to have needs because my dad had so many. I'm not allowing myself to have needs because my mom was so stressed out. Remember, children are adaptable. We adapt based on our circumstances. If, you're, if you're, your parents are depressed, you may become a cheer-upper type person, right? You always got jokes, always making everybody happy. If your parents were hmm, angry, and violent. You may become a, a kid that disappears. Nobody ever sees you. You hide in the shadows. You make yourself scarce. You are seen but not heard. If, you can't, if your parents are stressed out, you may become a rescuer. The one with no needs that takes care of everyone. The rock. That's what we do. We adapt. We play roles so long that the roles begin to play us and we think that's who we are. It's not who you are. You are infin infinity dancing. You are isness in a space. You are everything the universe has to offer and then some. That isn't confined by an idea of perfection or X, Y, and Z. It is, it is joy. It is an explosion of creativity and wonderment. Mm. I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to you. Go ahead and let that hit. Ooh, let it land. Ooh. You're feeling the feels. You're raw. You're feeling the feels because you know. So step number one is make the decision. Step number two is get to know them. Not them as your parents, them as the God them as the uh, villain in your story, them as the victim in your story. Get to know them. Ask powerful questions. I, I used to ask my dad and my mom, hey, when was the best time of your life? And of course, they're going to sometimes say, oh, when you were born in X, Y, and Z. And I say, oh, that's fantastic. Tell me all about it. And tell me another time, when was the best time of your life when I wasn't here? That has nothing to do with the kids. And find out. Then ask them, when's the worst time in your life? Interview your parents. That's step number two. 
because it'll give you insights. It'll help you understand why you are the way you are because you are a reflection and a, uh, a offshoot of their pain and suffering and things of that nature because when your mental maps of the world and your psyche was forming, they were informing it. What they thought about money, you've been thinking about money. What they thought about uh, sex, more than likely you've been thinking about sex. More than likely you were shamed for grabbing your, your genitals or... Um, experimenting with your cousin or X, Y, or Z, whatever their stuff was, they put on you. And so you get to find out, like truly. Step number three, you get to have clearing conversations. This is where you bring forward things that you normally wouldn't. This is where we let the cat out of the bag. This is where we address the elephant in the room. And a clearing conversation is not about dumping or trying to hurt our parents. It's about... Um, facing off with that which you have not been responsible for. Remember, one of the most powerful things you could do is take responsibility instead of placing blame. When I take responsibility, I have my power. When I place blame, whatever I'm placing the blame on has my power. So a clearing conversation would go something like this. Hey, dad. Hey, mom. Um... Do either of you have time in the next, let's call it a few days, to just drop in with me? And uh, I, there's some stuff I need to share with you that I think will be really powerful for all of us. I think it will be extremely helpful and uh, really beautiful for each of us uh, as a family as well. Now, take note how I'm setting that up. Because it instantly, if I heard that, I would think, oh, this person wants to create something beautiful, right? It's probably going to be a little serious, but they want to create something beautiful. So I hear the intention. The intention is to create something beautiful. It may be heavy, it may be messy, but I hear it, right? So then when you get in that conversation, you start with, I want to take responsibility for. I want to clear with you about. And so it would go something like this. I want to take responsibility for... Um, avoiding you and dad for so many years. I want to take responsibility for being afraid to come to this house and blaming you for my whole life um, and all the things that quote unquote went wrong. I'm sorry, mom. Now you weren't perfect. There were a lot of things that were very hurtful that happened in my childhood but I've been harboring those. I've been holding those and I've been avoiding you and dad and um, my brother or my sister or whoever. I've been avoiding the whole family. And I just want to apologize for that because what I desire in this lifetime is for us to truly know each other. What I desire in this lifetime is for us to actually be a family that is open and clear and all the things and you know, no blame or shame towards you. This is me taking responsibility. When the thing happened when I was nine, when you broke up, when I was, when you got a divorce, when I was 12, this is what I made up. When you got into that car accident and you X, Y, and Z, this is what I made up. When I used to hear you guys yelling at each other when I was seven, this is what it, how it, I interpreted it. This is what I did with it. And there's nothing wrong or bad. I'm old enough now to know that Life is going to life, that we're all going to get our ass kicked. And I just want to say, I am sorry for the role and the parts that I played in that, because I want to know you as a person. Now, do you see what I'm doing here? It's not about, I'm still addressing the issues. I'm just not blaming them for them. And I'll do a whole nother podcast on the drama triangle and how important it is to get out of the drama triangle because so many of us are casting our parents as villains and victims or heroes and making ourselves the victims or making ourselves the villain. But there's always some role we're casting them and ourselves in and it's not helpful to anyone. So that was step number three. Step number four is energetically do a ceremony where you let them go, 
where you cut the cord yourself. They don't have to be here. They could be dead, but you cut the cord. You make a decision that from this point forward, I'm going to live my life the way my life gets to be. Whatever that is, whatever mistakes, whatever beauty, whatever comes from it, I'm going to do my best to live my life. And then when you re-enter during Christmas or whatever holidays, you repeat and remember that as you enter those doors. You continuously take your power back. You're still going to be triggered by your parents. They're still going to think they own you. But if you energetically, continuously take your power back, you break up with them in a beautiful way and give them the space to be quote unquote real empty nesters where they have to reconfigure and create their own identity that has less to do with them being your mom and dad and more to do with them being a sentient being with a purpose on this planet. There's so much to say and so much to sift through. So I'm going to end this one here. Uh, If need be, I'll do a part two. But please um, use hashtag love's voice to share your biggest takeaways and breakthroughs. Uh, Also, I have a beautiful gift called the seven abundance activators at prestonsmiles.com forward slash abundance. PrestonSmiles.com forward slash abundance. If you want a free masterclass, it's a 30 minute class that I did on abundance and a little bit of money and what it takes to activate that space so that money and other things can flow into our space. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon. I really, really appreciate you from my heart to yours. Thank you for being with me and listening to this Uh, transmission. None of this is scripted. None of this is scripted. This is straight from my heart to your heart. Blessings and blessings. Let's go.